So let's go ahead and let's look at standard reduction potentials and their calculations. Okay, so what determines the cell's potential? Okay, so uh, the magnitude of the cell is going to depend on several factors. First of all, the reactions that are occurring at the um, anode and cathode, their specific properties, the concentrations of the reactants and products, and the temperature. Okay, um, so that brings us to an item called the standard cell potential or the standard uh, electromotive force or EMF. These are represented by E cell naught. Okay, um, and that is the cell potential under standard conditions. Okay, and guys recall that the standard conditions is one molar um, product and reactant at one ATM of pressure. Okay, we've seen this over and over again with that naught symbol. So the standard cell potentials or the standard, standard EMF um, of half reactions are usually provided in a nice table as you see here. Um, so basically we have various um, half reactions um, in uh, basically this tabulated form. We have the cell potentials in volts for each of them. Now what I want you guys to notice is that these are all half reactions that are reduction processes. Okay, so please look at the fact that electrons are being picked up on the reactant side of each of these. Um, so all of these are half reactions for reductions. So the standard hydrogen electrode um, is uh, the reference point, as I said in the previous slide. Um, it's known as the SHE, or um, SHE. And basically, um, the cell potential associated with this reduction process is equal to zero volts. And so all the other tabulated data that we have are um, referenced against this specific uh, electrode setup. Okay, so um, if I want to find the uh, specific um, reduction potential of, you know, a reaction such as uh, zinc's reduction or something of that sort, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up two cells, one that has the half reaction that I'm trying to find information out of, um, information about and um, the half reaction associated with the standard hydrogen electrode. Okay, so once I set that up, what I can do is um, basically allow the electrons to flow, measure um, the voltage that's calculated um, with my voltmeter, okay, and then plug it into the equation that we see right here. Okay, so E naught of the cell is going to be equal to the E naught of the cathode, so the reduction process occurring at the cathode, minus the E naught um, of the reduction process occurring at the anode. Okay, so we know the E cell, um, E naught of the cell because we measured it um, experimentally. Okay, we take that value and we plug it into our E naught of our cell. We also have the E naught of the reduction process for our cathode. Why? Because our cathode in this case is the Xi. So we plug that in um, as zero volts. So by manipulating this equation and solving for E naught um, of the anode process, which in this case uh, is the zinc process, um, we can subsequently calculate the E naught um, of zinc's reduction process. And this is how we categorize all of the um, tabulated data associated with the cell potentials that were seen on the previous slides. So not all of the um, reaction progressions or, or the setups have to be referenced according to um, the sheet. In fact, uh, we can actually utilize other tabulated data um, to compare and figure out their standard reduction potentials of different processes. So basically, what are we going to do here? Well, um, in this case, what we have is a specific chemical reaction, right? We have the oxidation of zinc um, and the reduction of copper, and of course these are occurring in their um, individual half cells. And what we're trying to figure out here is the standard reduction potential um, associated with the um, copper 2 ion. All right, so the way that we would set this problem up in order to figure out uh, what the reduction potential of our copper ion is, um, is very similar to what we did in the previous slide. So basically we take um, our E naught of our cell, okay, that's going to be equal to the E naught reduction potential of our cathode and the standard reduction potential of our anode, okay, and um, basically we're going to experimentally uh, measure the uh, voltage associated with the cell. Okay, so we allow the reaction to proceed. We get that data and we plug it into our E naught for our cell. 
We also know uh, the standard reduction potential of our zinc um, process, so we plug that into um, the process that's occurring uh, at the anode. Okay, and we know that oxidation is occurring at the anode, so we plug in the standard reduction potential for that process. Um, and then we manipulate the equation, and we can subsequently calculate uh, the reduction potential associated with um, the copper plus 2 ion. Okay, so remember, these standard reduction potentials that we talked about that are tabulated are reduction potentials um, for the half reactions of uh, solutes at one molar um, concentration and gases that are at one ATM. Okay, so the data that we see here, they're all reductions um, and they're all based in these uh, standard conditions. Okay, so um, basically the question is, how can we utilize um, the standard reduction potentials um, to give us more information? Well, basically we can combine two um, half reactions uh, to give us additional information about uh, an oxidation and reduction process that's occurring um, in the various cells of a voltaic cell. Okay, so two things that we need to do in order to combine two half reactions is first we have to reverse one of the half reactions um, and subsequently reverse the sign, obviously because one is going to be oxidation, one is going to be um, reduction. And we have to make sure that the electrons lost um, are equal to the electrons gained. And um, this is somewhat similar to what we've done with like Hess's law uh, in the past. However, unlike uh, the calculations that we've done with the Hess's law, um, in the case of reduction potentials, we do not multiply or divide the um, E0 value. Okay, so um, although we may multiply the equation, so the number of electrons um, balance, uh, we don't ch actually change the E0 value. Okay, and we'll talk about why that is in, in a second. Okay, so how would we calculate E cell from our standard reduction potentials? All right, so if we have this reaction here, Okay, um, iron is being reduced down to Fe2+, copper is being reduced down to plus 2. Okay, um, what we're going to do is we're going to find the half reactions that are associated with these two processes in our um, standard uh, reduction potential uh, appendices or, or those charts. Okay, and we're subsequently going to um, write them out as we've done here. Um, we have the reduction of iron plus 3 to iron 2 and the reduction of copper 2 to copper um, zero. So um, we have two uh, half reactions that are both reduction processes, but we know that oxidation and reduction are occurring simultaneously in this setup. Okay, so iron um, is being uh, reduced and copper is being oxidized. Um, so we need to adjust these equations um, accordingly, or these half reactions accordingly, so that um, there's oxidation and reduction occurring as well as the number of electrons are balanced. Okay, so our reduction process uh, was associated with iron, okay, um, so we don't need to do any flipping of um, this process. However, remember we did indicate that the number of electrons have to be balanced, okay, so our oxidation and reduction steps um, need to have the same number of electrons being gained and lost. So if I have two um, electrons needing to be gained by the copper in order to get reduced, um, then two electrons need to be um, being picked up by the iron. So um, we're going to take our reduction half reaction, multiply it through by 2. Okay, but notice that unlike uh, the Hess's law uh, setups and things like that we've done in the past, um, we do not multiply the standard reduction potential for this reduction process. Okay, um, the oxidation process, which is copper um, basically being oxidized to plus 2 and giving off two electrons. Um, that process obviously requires a flip because the way we have these written from our chart um, are in the form of reduction half reactions. So um, basically what I've done is I've taken this equation and I flipped it over. When I flip it over, the sign of the um, standard po cell potential or the um, standard reduction potential obviously gets flipped, um, which should make sense. Okay, and then we sum up the overall equation right, um, sum it up, and then we cancel out our um, various reactants and products if there's any repeats. So in this case, the only thing that gets canceled are obviously the electrons, and we end up with the appropriate reactants and products associated with this um, reaction. Okay, and uh, 
what we do is we sum our uh, standard potentials uh, for the oxidation and reduction process and we get our overall um, standard cell potential. Okay, so now that we've looked at uh, the process of calculating our E cells um, from our half reactions, uh, let's go ahead and let's talk about why we don't multiply the um, values for our reduction potentials um, when we multiply through um, in order to balance the electrons. Um, so basically electrical potentials are measured in potential energy per charge. Um, and what ends up happening is that uh, when you increase the amount of stuff by multiplying through, what you actually end up doing in a redox reaction is basically increasing both the potential energy and the charge at the same time. So what ends up happening is that the ratio between um, your energy and your charge um, is going to basically remain the same. So the voltage isn't going to change. Um, and so because of that uh, ratio setup, staying constant, um, you don't need to multiply the um, cell potential value. Okay, so just some um, thought processes with our standard reduction potentials. Okay, so the more positive our E0 of reduction, so our, the reduction potential that we see, the more likely the substance is going to be reduced. Okay, so if we look at these values, obviously we're increasing our E0 value, our voltage is increasing. So these are more likely to take on those electrons. So, you know, uh, for instance, fluorine, right? We know fluorine is a very electronegative element. It likes to pick up electrons, okay? It has a very high or very positive um, standard reduction potential. So it gets very, very easily um, reduced, okay? Um, and that, you know, obviously continues as you become more positive. Um, on the other end of that, it the... The lower on this table you go and the smaller your reduction potential, the more easily you're going to be oxidized. So um, basically, if you just remember one direction, such as, okay, obviously the more positive, the more easy it is to reduce, okay? The less positive you are um, with respect to your um, reduction, pump, reduction standard reduction potential, the more likely or the more easily you're going to be oxidized. Okay, what if I'm given half reactions um, at specific electrodes? Um, if I have something like this, um, where I have some half reactions, um, and I'm given generic uh, reduction potentials, um, I can utilize my understanding of uh, reduction potentials and things of that sort um, in order to calculate the cell potential. Okay, so um, Basically, I have a voltaic cell, and it's based on these reactions. And the question asks us which half reaction occurs at the cathode and which one at the anode. Okay, and then they want us to calculate the standard cell potential. So um, if I go ahead and I look at these two half reactions, um, I'm going to initially take a look at the standard reduction potentials. Okay, and rem remember the, that the more positive your standard reduction potential for a specific half reaction, um, the more likely that reduction process is going to occur. So if I take a look at the two reduction potential values that I'm given for the two half reactions, um, I can subsequently decide, uh, based on that understanding, which one is going to occur at the anode and which one's going to occur at the cathode. Okay, so which one of these is the most positive, or um, in this case, the least negative? The most positive or least negative of the group, or of the two, is this one right here right, because negative 0.13 is going to be less negative than negative 0.40, okay, so since this one is more positive or less negative, however you want to look at it, um, this is going to be the process that's going to have the easiest time being reduced, okay, and we know that the reduction process occurs at the cathode, remember red cat, okay, so this um, reduction of 10 is going to be what's happening at your cathode, okay, so now this brings us to calculating our standard cell potential, okay? And that's just going to bring us back to this equation that you see here, okay? The E0 of the cell is going to equal the E0 of the um, reduction process at the cathode minus the E0 of the reduction process at the anode, okay? So um, we know that this process or this 10 being reduced down is going to be occurring at the cathode, so that gets plugged into this portion. And we know that this uh, oxidation process is going to be occurring at the 
um, anode. Okay, so we plug that number here. Okay, we do the math and basically calculate our standard um, cell potential uh, through this means. Okay, and the last thing I want to do is I want to connect uh, your um, standard reduction potentials to uh, the definitions of oxidizing and reducing agents. So um, remember your ox agents, your oxidizing agent, okay, it's the thing that is going to be reduced. Okay, it's going to be reduced. And your um, redu reducing agent, okay, is going to be oxidized. Okay, so the strongest oxidizing agent is going to be the thing that's most easily reduced. The thing that has the most positive E0 value is going to be the thing that's most easily reduced. So the more positive your E0 value, the more likely the substance you have is the oxidizing agent. So now that we understand all these pieces, we can go ahead and move on to um, some additional information regarding uh, the usage of oxidation reduction processes.